I was just coming out here to the front orchard to do a little bit of pruning. And I got about here and I said, whoa, what's that? Bees are swarming. We got a swarm to catch. So I went and got Ryan off the tractor, told him you better hurry up and come get these before they leave. So we can have another colony. All right. We are hopefully gonna get this in here without any problems. As long as he gets the queen, he's he's good to go. He can just leave that box sitting there and they'll all march in. So he's gonna place that as close as he can to the base of the tree. And then he's just gonna scoop them up. You need to get back now, Ryan. Your shirt is not zipped. Please step away from the hive. more gentle than that at first just to make sure you don't hurt the queen but that's up to you if you get the bulk of them in there the queen is probably gonna be in there anyway so and just watch their behavior they'll follow the queen so if you see them going towards the box you know you probably got her if you see them going up the tree then you know she's probably higher baby Are you sure she's not in the crook of that tree be gentle I wish I had my sweeper use a leaf or something next to you That should be it. Now kind of watch. What was that? Look at that group on the side of the hive box. Is she in there? Make sure she didn't fall to the ground. They look like they're going in though, huh? Yeah. So sad. <laughs> They all appear to be going in the hive box, so we're pretty sure we got the queen. And we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of the frames in. We leave three frames out so that we can have an easy spot to dump the bees that we're scooping up. And now he's putting them back in and he'll put the lid on, but he'll leave it sitting there so that they can continue to get into the hive box through the entrance. I have a love-hate relationship with swarm season because I love catching swarms, but I also hate losing bees to swarms. And we are already down one hive because it swarmed. So this is good. This could be a break off of our bees. We don't know. Um, there's still bees in the other box. So if they did split into two colonies, and half of the colony swarm, then this might be our genetics anyway. But it could be from somewhere else. <laughs> or it could be from the year before when we had some swarm and they might be living in a colony somewhere in the wild. <laughs> we did lose our hive that we caught as a swarm at the end of the season last year. So this is going in that box and hopefully they'll be strong enough to survive. All right, Ryan doesn't want to have to put on his bee suit later. And 
the location we're moving them to is just a few feet away. So he's just going to go ahead and move them now. And if we lose a few stragglers, it's not that big of a deal. Don't walk backwards if you're going to fall. <laughs> I told him, just walk slowly and walk backwards. They'll follow you. <laughs> but yeah, not, not the brightest idea for somebody like Ryan with weak ankles. <laughs> And you can see there's just a few bees left in the tree still flying around. It's maybe 20 bees, so it's not a big deal that we don't get all of them. And I'm hoping that that short distance they might smell their queen and go ahead and head in. So you might think that my garden looks really messy and unkept, but there is a reason why I leave dead plant material in my garden from the fall all the way through the winter months and I don't clean it up in the spring until it's nice and warm. All right, so this is my reason. Do you see that hollow end? Do you see? Well, all of the really good beneficial insects and all of the native bees like to live inside of hollow tunnels in dead wood. So I do remove anything that's diseased. So my tomatoes are gone because tomatoes are always diseased in Georgia. <laughs> so by the end of the season, they have to be removed because of the blight. So this is some, this is a sunflower. I have some corn. I have some okra. I have some peppers. All of these things that have nice hollow stems when they die. So this is a perfect habitat for those insects. And I wait until the warm weather so that they can emerge in the spring and do their thing. Here at Wholesome Roots, we like to help protect our honeybees, but also we really like to protect our native pollinators. So I'm gonna snip them off right at the base and I'm gonna put them over in the wood line so that they can still come out in case any have not already emerged with this warm weather. That way they still stay safe and protected. Another thing we do for the native pollinators is something that some people might consider unsightly as well, but so worth it. If you can see, there are little tiny native bees Look at that beauty. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Yeah, so this is very beneficial. We leave this purple dead nettle. Let's see over there, there's a big bee. Where'd you go? There he goes. <laughs> it's hard to zoom in and stay steady, but there he is. Or she. <sighs> Yep, they like it. But you see, we're not like other gardeners. We're not trying to make our garden Pinterest worthy or only viewable if it looks perfect. We're showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's because our garden is always gonna be an ecosystem. An ecosystem that has benefits for all living animals and creatures. Even if it means that we lose some of our produce, we're still gonna get enough, even if we share with nature. Our goal is to raise enough food for our family and help protect the environment and the earth that we live on. We also leave the flowers on our brassicas because the bees love them too. I see some bumblebees and some, is that a honeybee I see over here? Where'd it go? Well, oh, yep. A honeybee and a bunch of little native bees that are too small for me to identify. All done cleaning the garden and I just wanted to take these little chicks outside for a photo shoot. These are American breast chicks that we just hatched. Oh my goodness, they couldn't be any cuter. All right, we got our swarm box set up right here above the garden. I got most of the dead material out of all of these beds. Looks much better. I still have to do the kids bed 
and I still have to do those two beds but for the most part it's pretty well cleaned up you can see I had a ton that I had to clean and I'm not pulling these until I go to plant so they get to stay for a few more weeks when we decide to finally get out here and plant some stuff so with tilling the garden down below cleaning this garden up a little bit to get ready to plant and enjoying our new baby chicks and catching a bee swarm, I'd say it's another great day on the homestead. We'll see you next time.